This is Eyewitness News, the news leader, with Bill Ritter and Liz Cho, Scott Clark with sports, and Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News at 11. Iraqi militants say they've kidnapped a journalist from New York, and now they're threatening to kill him. Plus, new pictures of the formerly conjoined twins and new information about their road to recovery. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tim Fleischer. Bill is off tonight. And I'm Liz Cho. We begin with that missing journalist. Tonight, the family of Micah Guerin is in seclusion. The 36-year-old journalist from New York City was in Iraq on assignment when he disappeared Friday. Tonight, a militant group there is threatening to kill a man believed to be Guerin if the U.S. does not leave within 48 hours. Jeff Pegues is in the West Village with more. Jeff? Liz, you can imagine how unsettling and difficult this has been for Micah Guerin's loved ones. His fiance has been holed up inside this West Village apartment complex behind me all evening long. In a third floor apartment in the West Village, Micah Guerin's fiance, family and friends. Shortly after militants reportedly threatened to kill the American journalist, this FBI agent tells us the family wants time alone. Family time to compose themselves to come up with some kind of statement to issue a general statement to the public. Okay, thank you. Earlier today, the Al Jazeera network aired the videotape threat. A militant group calling itself the Martyrs Brigade says it has kidnapped a Western journalist, and the group plans on killing the journalist if U.S. forces don't leave the Iraqi city of Najaf within 48 hours. U.S. forces have been fighting militants there linked to a Shiite cleric for two weeks. There have been scores of fatalities in the battle, and now Micah Guerin could become a casualty as well if these mass militants armed with rifles and grenades carry out their threat. Just a couple of days ago, Guerin's fiance released this statement, perhaps sensing the danger. I am appealing to Micah Guerin's kidnappers to please release him, she says. He was simply doing his job as a journalist. Tonight, FBI agents left the West Village apartment. It is not clear what, if any, words of comfort they had for a family hoping for the best. They are, of course, hoping for a peaceful resolution to all of this. It all began about a week ago. According to witnesses, Garen and his Iraqi translator were seized from the streets of Nazaria. That's a town in southern Iraq. We're live in the West Village. I'm Jeff Begay's Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jeff. New Jersey Senator John Corzine tonight saying that he has no intention of seeking the governor's office in a special election, but he's not ruling out a run in the future. That special election would have been to replace outgoing Governor Jim McGreevy if he had left office by September 3rd. However, McGreevy says he's staying put until November 15th, making the special election question moot. A source in Corzine's office, though, tells Eyewitness News tonight the senator is not ruling out a run for governor in 2005. A guilty plea from a friend and political contributor of Governor McGreevy, Charles Kushner left federal court in Newark after admitting to tax fraud and witness retaliation. Kushner had been charged with hiring a prostitute to influence the testimony of his sister's husband. Kushner is scheduled to be sentenced November 29th and could face up to two years in prison. The charges against him have no connection to Governor McGreevy. An unexpected legal deal tonight in the Staten Island ferry disaster. Prosecutors say they are dropping the single charge against Michael Gansis, the captain of the boat that crashed into a pier killing 11 people last October. Gansis was charged with lying to investigators. In exchange, he will now have to help with the prosecution of Patrick Ryan, New York City's director of ferry operations. Ryan is charged with manslaughter for allegedly neglecting long-established safety procedures. Alleged corruption in a Brooklyn court caught on tape. Prosecutors in a bribery case against two court employees today showed damaging videotapes of state Supreme Court Justice Gerald Garson. A hidden camera in Garson's chamber shows the judge pocketing money given to him by lawyer Paul Simonofsky. Court clerk Paul Sarnell and retired court officer Louis Salerno are charged with taking bribes to steer Simonofsky's case to Garson. Garson himself was arrested and charged last year with accepting bribes. A major round of, of people by federal authorities that they call of sexual predators. Some of them are in this country illegally. 64 men in New York City were picked up during raids early today. Authorities say the men are all foreign nationals who have been convicted of various sex crimes against children. But tonight they are in custody awaiting deportation to 19 different countries. A routine arrest at a subway station in Harlem could end up being the break. Cops 
in another state had been waiting for. Officers stopped Cornelius Leary for failure to pay his fare at a station at East 116th Street last night. They then discovered that he was armed with a handgun. A further check on Leary's background revealed that he was wanted in connection with a murder investigation in North Carolina. Now Leary also faces a variety of charges here in New York. Now to the presidential campaigns, and both candidates are stumping in swing states. In Cincinnati, Senator John Kerry addressed the veterans of Foreign Wars annual convention today where he told the veterans he is, quote, true brother in arms. He also criticized President Bush's plan to withdraw U.S. troops from Europe and Asia, saying it would weaken U.S. security. And in Wisconsin, President Bush made several stops, including the preseason training camp for the Kansas City Chiefs. The president met with voters there and threw a baseball, uh, football around with quarterback Trent Green. This is the president's third bus trip through the state. He lost Wisconsin in 2000 by a little more than 5,000 votes. And Liz, as a show of support for the president, a Long Island congressional candidate is boycotting the boss tonight. Now, you may recall rock legend Bruce Springsteen, the boss, and other musicians are planning a series of anti-Bush concerts. Nina Pineda is at Madison Square Garden with more on this political counterattack. Nina. Tim, Bruce Springsteen's ballads about love and loss, peace and patriotism have the kind of universal appeal that's made the Jersey native a superstar. But now that he's throwing his hat into the ring of partisan politics, well, some conservatives are giving Bruce the big boo. Here's my vote. Boycott the boss. If you don't buy his politics, don't buy his music. Boycott Bruce, Conservative Party candidate Marilyn O'Grady, who's trying to unseat Senator Charles Schumer in a three-way race along with Republican Howard Mills this November, wants music fans to leave Springsteen dancing in the dark. It's getting tiresome listening to the entertainment elite take on the president and uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Michael Moore. The boss's voice joins a chorus of musicians and other celebrities stumping for John Kerry and John Edwards. I do believe that they're interested in asking, asking all these questions and that they're interested in working towards honest answers. And I, I don't feel that way about the current administration. Bruce Springsteen's Vote for Change tour plays five dates in battleground states crucial to winning the election. Bruce Springsteen is somebody who obviously has captured the imagination of the American public. And the fact that he's putting his career on the line in order to support a particular point of view is going to be very compelling. Democratic organizer Andrew Roger founded a movement to draft Bruce to get involved in this year's race. He calls the candidate behind the anti-boss ads an opportunist interfering with the democratic process. If you're boycotting somebody because they have an opinion, then you're basically voting against democracy. So it's hypocritical as far as I'm concerned. How can you be running in a democratic society and then at the same time penalizing somebody for voicing their opinion. Her opinion will try to convince voters not to be bullied by the boss. I can't stop his concert. His concert will go on, but I'm hoping people will not support the concert. Well, the boss's vote for change tour swings through five swing states. He does not come here to New York, however, but several country music stars, including the Gatlin brothers and Travis Tritt, will be stumping for the GOP. Many will be here for the convention at the Garden, which kicks off at the end of the month. We're live at Madison Square Garden. I'm Nina Pineda, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Nina, thank you. Well, some thrill riders at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey got more of a thrill than they expected. A storm knocked out power to the Batman and Robin roller coaster for about an hour this afternoon. That left riders stranded about 75 feet in the air, and some were stuck upside down or sideways. They stayed like that for about 40 minutes until workers were able to ease the cars down so passengers could walk off. No one was hurt. The power outage affected all 70 of the park's rides. The NYPD going to incredible lengths to keep an eye on radical protesters before the convention begins. The Eyewitness News exclusive when we come back in 60 seconds. An Eyewitness News exclusive tonight. The NYPD is going to incredible lengths to keep the most radical protesters expected at the Republican convention under control. Police are now tracking 56 potentially dangerous people. Marcus Solis has our exclusive report. The debriefings have been taking place at John Jay College and the Police Academy. Inside, the NYPD's Intelligence Division is outlining security plans for the upcoming Republican National Convention. The big concern, anarchist groups, which disrupted the WTO conference in Seattle in 1999 and have threatened to do the same here. Sources say the NYPD has identified 56 primary anarchists who will be followed 24 hours a day. 
one supervisor and six cops will be assigned to each person. Sources say detectives are leaving this weekend for Boston, Washington, D.C., North Carolina, and California to begin surveillance and tail the protesters as they travel to New York. Sources also say the department is preparing for protesters in Central Park, convinced many demonstrators will descend on the Great Lawn Sunday, August 29th, regardless of whether a permit is granted. Another concern are small explosions set off in Midtown, aimed at diverting manpower away from the convention site. Police have already been holding drills where cops simulate a coordinated response called a surge. We pledge resistance. Much of the intelligence has come from NYPD cops who have infiltrated various protest groups. Sources say for nearly two years, as many as 20 cops have been meeting with, traveling with, and secretly reporting on the activists' plans. Tomorrow, the NYPD will demonstrate training and arrest tactics uniformed officers are currently receiving. The surveillance detail will be handled by undercover narcotics officers. At Madison Square Garden, Marcus Solis, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A doctor from upstate New York who is linked to the most recent anthrax investigation has lost his job with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Earlier this month, federal agents searched Dr. Kenneth Berry's home in Wellsville, New York. A simultaneous search brought agents to the home of Berry's parents in Ocean Beach, New Jersey. Berry is an emergency room doctor. A spokesman for the Pittsburgh Medical Center says Berry's employment ends November 8th. The FBI has not named Berry a suspect. When we come back, they're living separate lives and thriving. Tonight, a new look at those formerly conjoined twins and the remarkable progress they are making. And a warm and steamy night, almost tropical. So we'll check the tropics and also your forecast. It's on its way. Tomorrow at 5, he's slowly losing his sights. Could a new treatment help him? Eyewitness News is on call. Plus, what good is a laptop if it won't stay open? Eyewitness News tackles a common problem on a popular commuter. Join Diana Williams, Chaudet Benarinois, and Sam Champion tomorrow at 5 on Eyewitness News right here on ABC7. The Sorrento here has got a V6 engine, plenty of cargo space. This is Eyewitness News. Proud to support the Protect Our Children campaign. Have you seen Monica? ABC7 and your local Tri-State Ford stores urge you to protect our children. If you're talking football, ABC7's all over it. Catch the fireworks as the New York Jets battle the Indianapolis Colts live Saturday night at 8 here on ABC7. It has now been two weeks since those two-year-old conjoined twins from the Philippines underwent a massive surgery to be separated. Well, tonight we're getting a new look at the boys as doctors keep a very close eye over their recovery. Tonight, Montefiore Medical Center released this new video of Carl and Clarence Aguirre. Their doctors say their recovery is right on track. The boys are being kept in separate hospital rooms for now to avoid the possibility of infections. Today, for the first time ever, the boy's mother had an opportunity to hold them separately on her own without the help of doctors or nurses. I'm excited, but still a little bit nervous. I might hurt their head or... but. It's wonderful to hold them one by one. They're moving all their extremities uh, and they're really coming back to their same old personalities. They've become quite playful. Carl was treated for a mild urinary tract infection. Doctors are also paying close attention to a small amount of fluid that has now developed under the skin flaps that were placed over his skull after the separation surgery. We simply want to be sure that that fluid doesn't interfere in any way with their wound healing. So this was really sort of a maintenance uh, check today. The boys were born connected at their skulls. They underwent a series of surgeries, then on August 4th, a marathon operation to finally separate them. And although doctors are impressed by the twins and their resilience, they say the road to recovery will be long and difficult. We know that there are still a lot of details that we have to watch out for, so we're keeping a very, very close watch on them, and we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we encourage them to continue this recovery. Mm, so sweet. Well, the boys have already started physical therapy, and they still have at least one more operation to reconstruct their skulls. Tim? Some residents of Florida's barrier islands are making their way back home for the first time since Hurricane Charlie. Residents returning to Sanibel Island are finding their homes are still standing but damaged, including shattered windows and stripped roofs. The island's 6,000 residents are still without drinkable water and electricity. The heavily damaged Captiva Island is still not open to residents. 
Well, I know when you were doing your teas earlier on, I saw a little thing in the corner that said T.S. Danielle. Yeah. Do Which we have was to worry about that? no, we absolutely don't. That was Hurricane Danielle. Okay. So now that it's a tropical storm, it's good. It's in the Atlantic. Doesn't have any direction to go anywhere near any landmass right now. So the tropics are fairly quiet for us, and we get close to the time where we're looking at the middle of the or the height of the tropical season. Well, we've got some tropical air of our own. Walk over to the wall. We'll show you exactly what it looks like outside our doors. It is a humid night and that heavy air is uh, going to develop some fog in areas. You may have already noticed some fog developing outside uh, in your community and likely if you had one of those quick moving early morning and to late afternoon thunder showers, you're going to see some. Here's a look at our tropical air. Here's a look at their tropical air. There's Danielle uh, well off in the Atlantic and what was Earl is now Nicaragua, Honduras kind of moving through there. Not anything organized as a tropical system at this point. Just an awful lot of rain that direction could reform in the Pacific. And that would be a whole new ball game, so we'll keep an eye on that storm. 73 degrees outside our doors right now. Relative humidity at about 93%. The barometer steady at this point. That air, you got to swim through it tonight. South winds at about 9 to 11 miles per hour, helping you a bit. 79 degrees, the top number on the day today. 68 degrees where we started. We'll start around 64 in Poughkeepsie, 68 in Morristown, 70 in Central Park, 68 degrees toward the island. Central New Jersey numbers at 69 and 70 degrees. Fog develops overnight. Uh, look for that in the morning in patchy but dense form. 84, 85 degrees, Hudson Valley numbers. New Jersey comes in in that 86, 87 degree range, while eastern numbers are a little cooler on the island at 83 degrees. But at least at least we're in the 80s. Yeah, this time really we mean it. Um, there's a couple of fronts that are back off to the west. Two of them really. One of them times through tomorrow afternoon, so it puts the likelihood of some scattered thunderstorms in there. The next one or the second one is even stronger. That's third. I'm sorry, Friday night into Saturday, and it could mean that we see some severe thunderstorms popped up, uh, popping up on Saturday as as could be a problem. So scattered thunder tonight. Most of that is already done with us, though, so it's fairly dry and quiet for the rest of the night. Hazy sunshine during the day tomorrow. Scattered afternoon thunderstorm again. The proximity of this front is off to the west, so they'll build in central New York State and Pennsylvania, but we may see one or two make a rumble through. Our UV forecast for tomorrow is a 6, which is on right on the border of moderate to high. It also means that we're expecting a good amount of sunshine to make it through the steamy, hazy clouds tomorrow. Spot thunderstorm, hazy and humid overnight tonight. Tomorrow, warm and humid, hazy sunshine. 86 degrees is your high temperature. And for tomorrow night, it uh, stays in the 70s, so it's warm and humid, partly cloudy skies. Five-day plan shows you about three days of the 80s, 86, 88. And then when this real front comes through on Saturday, makes a big difference. Sunday and Monday are 78 degrees, cooler days. Sunday does open up with some sunshine. Monday's a very nice day at 78 degrees as well. Next three are hot and humid days. Summer definitely returns. Oh, yeah, it's here. It's here, definitely. All right. Thank you, Sam. Sure. Up next, how about some savings on prescriptions without leaving your home? Mm. First, though, let's take a look at tonight's winning New York lottery numbers. We'll get you a good look at those. And for those of you holding New Jersey tickets, here are your winning lottery numbers. Sam, you got your pen out? Yes, I do. You're writing them down? Yeah. Because <laughs> we have a really long look. And now, tonight's live drawing of the big one, Lotto. and is just starting to become available. Well, a fan who ran onto the field during a Mets game at Shea Stadium has been sentenced to two months in jail. 38-year-old John McCarthy of Totowa, New Jersey, ran around the field with a sign that read, Howard Stern, here's Johnny, under a new state law prohibiting interference with professional sporting events. He will serve eight weekends in jail starting this fall. McCarthy must also stay at a Shea Stadium for three years. Mm. Well, had the Yankees been running around the stadium, they might have won. Yeah, no. oh. <laughs> You're tough. <laughs> the Moose returned to the mound tonight. Mike Messina back pitching with the Yankees and coming up on Eyewitness News, the question of being rusty after over a month of inactivity is answered. Plus, we hear from the golden boy at the Olympics. Olympics, Paul Hom next. What's up with the Yankees? Two losses? They own the Twins, too. Yeah. They'd won 13 straight meetings heading into their series in Minneapolis. Now they've lost two straight against them. Mike Messina took them out for the first time since July 6th. They couldn't expect vintage Messina. They got far less. Shannon Stewart unloads on him on his second pitch of the game. Solo shot. Messina was working from behind right from the get-go. Fourth inning now. Shannon Stewart strikes again off Messina. Stewart went three for five tonight. This double knocks. Scores. USA salvages a one-one.
tie. I'm Scott Clark, and that's it for sports, folks. All oh. right. Thanks, We're done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. From the stock market to a businessman, Donald Trump, master of many careers, real estate developer, casino magnet, TV star, and now the Donald is a game maven. Yes, the new board game looks a little like Monopoly, complete with the real estate holdings and paper money. As part of the promotion, one lucky woman got to grab as many of the Trump bucks as she could, winning a weekend at the Trump Casino. Doesn't look like she caught very goggles? many, though. <laughs> What's with the goggles? <laughs> that is the news for now. Let's I'm Tim Fleischer. Night Lines up next, followed by Jimmy Kimmel Live. We're back at tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Have a good night.